check this out. Every now and then and again, you run into something that kind of looks like this. It's, uh, well, electricity comes out of it. What can I say? <laughs> you gotta plug something in and you might get a little zap, you know? It's interesting. So I'm in this uh, empty, thoroughly empty, wood everywhere, cute 1950s house. Okay, you know what I'm saying? The owners of this house, hang on. The owners of this house, where is it? Here. The owners of this house have this style of electrical outlet everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Now, somebody made millions. They decided, you know what? Since we can't use this, our new modern day three prong things for our outlets, we're gonna keep our outlets in our wall with a two prong and we're gonna create an invention. Something else to buy. And I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, an adapter. A three prong mix, no, a three hole mixed with a two prong adapter thing. Check this out. Click, goes in, no problem. Now check this out. Boom, click, goes in, no problem. The only other problem is, Well, there is no other problem. So, even though this little guy right here does provide 120 volts of electricity, well, actually, matter of fact, let me, let me just double check. I don't even know what, how much electricity is coming out of this sucker. It'll tell me right here. Now, whoever installed this installed it upside down, so I have to look. Okay. Yes, so whoever installed this, you know, we have 100 and float 123, 124 volts coming out of this sucker. The functionality of it, really the convenience of being able to plug in modern day things, modern day things is gone. So we're gonna swap this sucker out for the safest alternative. Just as we predicted, <clears throat> when we yank this sucker out, there's no ground. Also, by the way, when you take this out, <laughs> make sure the power is off. You might get zapped. You feel me on that? This something this old, you gotta yank it out, it pops. You ever have that happen to you before? I have. Okay, so <laughs> there's no ground just as we predicted. That means it is very important that we replace this with a GFCI outlet. Now, there's only two wires here. I don't know if this is literally just on its own circuit. I don't know. If it is on its own circuit, then this is absolutely necessary. But if this is the last little outlet in an entire chain of little receptacles like this, little wall outlets, then I wouldn't have to put a GFCI outlet here. I would just have to put it at the beginning of any circuit. So if the circuit started here, if I put this GFCI outlet right here and then fed wire from this outlet to this outlet, this could just be a regular, <clears throat> regular modern day outlet with no ground and it would still be protected by this GFCI right here because all electricity goes through here, it funnels through the internals and then comes out of the GFCI and feeds this with power. So if this kind of, you know, fucked up a little bit, it would trip the GFCI immediately. So one GFCI protects every outlet that is fed subsequently through the GFCI with electricity. That's how it works. This needs to monitor the total flow of electricity coming in and out. And to do that, it is picky on where the black wire actually goes. We know the black wire goes on this side because of the bronze screws, but this particular guy loves the black wire to go right here. Now, how do I know that? These invisible words right here say line, and there's a little arrow that points to here and here. In electrician terminology, mumbo jumbo vernacular, line is your incoming hot side. Now, down here is the words called load, and load and just electrician mumbo jumbo vernacular is the outgoing hot side down down the line you know what i'm saying 
So electricity comes in here. And if we want to daisy chain or just have electricity coming out in the wall to feed another, let's say outlet in the circuit, same circuit, these are the ports it's gonna be using, the load side. Line side is electricity coming in. Load side is electricity going out. Copper means hot. Silver means neutral. Now you have the upgrade. All right, let's move on to the moment of truth here. Let's actually cut this old sucker out of the way and replace it with the new GFCI outlet. It's only gonna take us about 13 seconds. So just grab your handy dandy pair of wire strippers and uh, strip off about half inch or so or so of the outer sheathing of the white wire and the black wire. If you have a ground wire, awesome. You'll find at the bottom of your GFCI outlet, there is a little green screw. Just twist some wire, that grounding wire around that screw, and you're good to go. Uh, after that, take your black wire and your white wire and insert it into the back of your GFCI outlet on the line side of the outlet. And uh, in the respective ports, black with bronze, white with silver screws, you know. Uh, anyway, once you do that, grab your handy dandy hammer drill and just screw those suckers in there tight. You're fine. I know a lot of people say, oh, use a screwdriver. You know, you can do that, but I find that a hammer drill works just fine for me. This, this is a button. Right there, that yellow thing is a button. This is designed to activate a GFCI outlet to make sure it trips, it shuts off. Now, when I plug this in, nothing. I get nothing, it doesn't trip. It doesn't go you would hear it when it's, we're gonna trip it in a second, you're gonna hear it, I think. But somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, let's say you're selling your house and they don't know what they're doing, they plug one of these testers in because a home inspector's there and they just make sure everything works. And they go to test it and they're like, oh, it doesn't work, your outlet's broken. Because they don't know that it, there's no ground wire. Now, even if they knew that there's no ground wire, they may not understand something really important. The way that this works, it creates a little kind of fault using the ground wire to trip this, the, the mechanics in this GFCI outlet. But if there's no ground wire, <laughs> if there's no ground wire, nothing happens. So your home inspector is gonna say, ooh, your outlet's broken, you need to replace it, or all of them, you know what I'm saying? But how you know if it's really broken, if this brand new outlet is really broken, you got to press the test button to see if it actually trips or not. Check this out. Did you hear that? Do you also see there's a little light on it now? That lets me know that it's functioning appropriately. This can trip itself and it creates like a little fault in with the neutral wire. This one creates the fault using the ground wire, but this one creates the fault using the neutral wire. Now. I'm gonna press this button, this little yellow button. And because there is a ground wire, check this out, watch. Power. This activates the internals of the GFCI via the ground wire when I press the yellow button. But because that one has no ground wire, this doesn't activate it. So like I said, if you're going to sell your house and it gets inspected, whatever, and, the, and you know that there's no grounding wire, and you know, the inspector says, oh yeah, your GFCI outlets aren't working, you gotta replace them, yada, yada, yada. Just so like, no dude, there's no ground wire. So, you know, <clears throat> you can buy these little stickers that go on, and actually it's code. <laughs> it's code to put little stickers on here that says, you know, there's no ground. Most, it, they're, they're not aesthetic, so most people don't actually put them on. But uh, if you have an electrician come and he does it, he will, put the stickers on, but you can remove the stickers because they're, because they're not cool. <laughs> they're not cool. <laughs> All right, y'all. Danny Duncan here for another. Shut the fuck up, I'm making a video over here. <laughs> All right, y'all, sorry for that interruption. You sprinkle a little, God damn it. You sprinkle a little crystal in front of them damn crackheads and they just go all berserk and wild and Tasmanian right, devil on. all over your construction site. You hear me on that one? Now, I'm about to show you how to make $10,000 in a 
about eight hours. You feel me on that? And the best part is, you ain't got to do any of the work yourself. That's cool. If you told me to come up here, you told me you told me you were going to pay me if I got up here and did it again. I told you I was going to pay your ass. Oh, wow. These are 25-foot ceilings. Man, you think I'm risking my life for peanuts? No, a little bit of crystal rock will do you just good, won't it? Now shut the fuck up and get to wine.